Depending on how you count repeat encounters, there are close to 20 bosses in Metroid Dread. And we're gonna rank them, going from easiest to hardest. At first I was going to base these just off my normal playthrough, but then I had the bright idea of doing a 0% hard mode run and no hitting all of them, which was, well, painful. So we'll talk a little bit about both, but it certainly changed my original order. Now to be fair, I did some sequence breaks that forced me to pick up a few missiles, so it wasn't quite 0%, but I tried not to use the extras, and I didn't pick up any extra energy tanks, so it didn't seem worth starting from scratch. I also think most of the boss names aren't super catchy, so I made up a few of my own. Let's start at the bottom with number 18, the Damaged Emmy, or as I like to call it, Jamie Lannister. The easiest boss in Metroid Dread is of course this one-handed, glorified tutorial. There's no reason to expect much from a tutorial, which is perfectly fine. Of course, I thought the Emmy shamble would end here, but this is a function of all face plateless Emmy, apparently. They do, however, get you with the door spoop the first time, and honestly, I thought it was a fluke the first time, so I ran into him another two or three times in my first playthrough before accepting that he would indeed kill me in the doorway every time. But after that, Jamie here shouldn't be a problem. Better luck next time, buddy. Number 17 is the White Emmy, or Samsung White as I named it. Samsung is the first real boss-like encounter Samus faces, and it shows. It tends to start at a disadvantage when you enter into its zone, and it seems to run more slowly than Samus, so ruthless killing machine it is not. Although I will say I think Samsung is the Emmy I have parried the least number of times. Not sure if that's because, with it being early in a run, you aren't practiced on the counter, or you're just getting caught less because it's relatively easy to avoid. There's plenty of space to move around, but a lack of abilities at this point does lead to the occasional capture. Samus seems to love grabbing ledges instead of landing on them, which leaves you a great foot-catching distance as if Samsung is some monster under your Metroid bed. Once you have the Omega Laser, finding space to kill Samsung isn't very difficult, which makes them feel just a bit underwhelming. Breaking up the Emmy with something Emmy adjacent here, the central unit which is a boring as fuck name. I like to think of them as the Elder Brains. I'm grouping them all together here because they aren't very different and are very easy. Even without getting hit, most of these took only one attempt. The projectiles are slow and easy to dodge, and the rings can be destroyed by stronger attacks for resources, if you didn't know. These floating gray matters basically just watch as you eviscerate them. These guys are pretty boring, so there isn't really much more to say here. Shoot them. Dodge a laser, shoot him some more, you'll see this pattern pop up a few more times. And the last Elder Brain is actually the easiest because... Shine Spark. At number 15, another Emmy is bottoming out our list. Key Lime is basically the same as Samsung, except that it can do this weird backwards somersault and then crawl through narrow passages. This makes it harder than the White Emmy, but not by a large margin. It could just keep up with you a little bit better, but it's still slower than you and relatively easy to avoid. Plus we get to stealth to avoid it now, which is an excellent anti-Emmy tool. The difference between our first two Emmy and Key Lime just isn't enough to distinguish them by much, but escaping it I think is a little bit tougher than fighting the central units. Number 14. Excuse me a minute, but you know those electric fly swatters? Well imagine instead of killing the fly, it gave it electric superpowers, ergo. I think some people may be surprised to see this enemy fairly low on the list, mostly because of the seeking attack, which I will agree, I only really managed to dodge it once while I was trying, but may I introduce you to screw attack. I got it early in my hard mode run, and let me tell you, it absolutely trivializes flytrap. It destroys every one of their projectiles, and screw attacking into the fly doesn't give impact damage like most bosses do. It's honestly not fair. Also, you can shine spark into the room, so this fight shouldn't take long. In fact, the hardest part is probably the X score that emerges from the defeated bug. That thing just comes at you, man. It don't care. Golzuna comes in at number 13. I have another name for this big guy, and I mean, how do I put it delicately? Derriere here. Well, there's one main way to damage him, and it's in the ass. Shine Spark comes in handy once again for the beginning of this fight. Taking out the first few evolutions is easy, but the first time you fight Derriere, knowing how to avoid his various cross bombs is a bit of a pickle. Most of them are actually quite easy to avoid by just going over top of him, but the one that tracks you can be dodged by jumping toward Golzuna at the right time and then backing off. Also worth noting that his red energy charge never goes fully into the wall, so you can just chill at the right distance, and don't let him back his ass into you. Once you have a good handle on avoiding those attacks, Derriere goes down pretty 
easy. Once again, the X core is honestly the hardest part. That thing's a dick on a no hit boss run. Number 12, Corpius, or the Cosmic Chameleon. Yeah, I know it's a scorpion, but he goes invisible, and I like alliteration. This is the first boss on our list that is actually a lot of fun. Darier and Flytrap are both glorified minions, the Emmy are all basically the same, but the Cosmic Chameleon here is a good time. It has a few different moves to mix you up with, distinct phases, and an absolutely killer interactive cinematic. These were my favorite part of the game for sure. You also can't game this guy like other bosses because of how early the fight is. No bullshit abilities to abuse. Here's looking at you, Shine Spark. If this list was ranked on boss quality, I think Cosmic would make it into the top three. But as is, he isn't very difficult to overcome. He's slow, and I imagine most people beat him the first time without dying. No hitting him gave me bad expectations for future bosses on the list, let me tell you. This leaves the Cosmic Chameleon at this number 12 spot. I hope you've got your mechanics down, because Yellow Emmy likes to go fast. Which is why I nicknamed it Usain Bolt. Bolt is fast, and the first real challenge from the Emmy. Escaping it on a straightaway is tough. Unfortunately for this bot, the platforming in this game doesn't leave a lot of those lying around. It can be frightening when Bolt charges up their dash, but quickly swapping platforms basically makes them stop in their tracks. Keep your movement erratic and you should be fine. I also find that by this time I can parry the Emmy close to 50% of the time, so getting caught isn't even game over. There are a few spots to hit Bolt with the Omega Laser. The important thing is to keep them under fire so they can't use the dash. For whatever reason, the Emmy lose all their ferocity once you've beaten their brains. Go figure. Chozo Soldier. Wait, wait. Scrap that. Chozo X. What this boss lacks in move diversity, it makes up for with speed. I definitely died a couple times learning the attack patterns. They aren't terribly difficult, but they are just quick enough that simply thinking on your feet will leave you with a spear in your gut. Sadly, Chozo X doesn't have any of the nice interactive scenes, but the cinematics you do get during the fight are pretty sick. They don't actually have a ton of health, so once you get comfortable with the fight, it should go pretty quickly. You can fill them with a lot of damage between their attacks, just keep on your toes so you can dodge their attacks as needed, especially the gunk shot later versions get. This boss gets downgraded to a mini boss after the first encounter, but they are honestly pretty fun to fight, so that was fine. Honestly, I was hoping we would encounter more Chozo to fight during Dread, but these parasites will have to do. Number 9, Chozo X, but this time they have a shield and so are different, but not really. This gladiator inspired variant starts out with a shield that's easily parried and destroyed, or even just eliminated with Shine Spark. But I guess you could call it a fun little variation. The gold elite version forces you to actually use the grapple beam during a fight, which is nice. It's the only time though, which makes you miss it the first time, because why would it be a thing in only one fight? I would have loved to use the grapple beam in more encounters. By the end, we fight like five of these Chozo parasites, which is exactly when it starts to get tired, so they really milked the most they could out of this. Never really get tired of that kill cinematic, though. Number 8. Tentacle Anus. I hope you made it this far in the video, because this boss started all these idiotic nicknames. This is the boss that makes me feel the dumbest in Dread. The first time I think I died twice before I actually watched the opening scene that shows you that you need to activate the button before trying to swap sides. I was just doing it still underwater and running straight into a tentacle. This sorry excuse for a hentai is not really all that challenging if you aren't an idiot like me. You can't destroy the red orbs, but you can destroy the blue orbs. And the tentacles take about five years to attack you, which almost makes them hard because you try to dodge early and then you get hit. But the only thing that makes this challenging at all is being underwater. Being underwater is goddamn awful in this game. If you've seen my review, you know that I hate it a lot. It's the only reason Tentacle Anus is this far up the list. Actually, the one attack that is hard to dodge is the triple tentacle screw attack. I just tanked it in my first playthrough, but in the no hit, it was too hard to dodge by jumping, so I grappled to the ceiling, which for too long I didn't think of doing. My brain told me that you can only use the magnets when the green light is turned on, but that is just not true. We do get a parry cinematic in this fight, but it's probably the most uninteresting of the lot. Samus just stands there and shoots while Tentacolanus takes it, which honestly is her favorite thing to do, so I guess I can't blame her. That's Samus standing and shooting, not Tentacolanus, you know, taking it. It's been a while since we saw an Emmy, but Grape Juice comes in at number 7 because seeing through walls is bullshit. I think I maybe got hit by the purple stun ball twice between my two playthroughs since it moves through the air so slowly, but getting detected through walls still closes the exits, which means even if Grape Juice isn't close to you, you have to basically reset or find a new path. 
get some distance and get to the door before it spies you again. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, but we are late in the game at this point, so fair, I guess. There is a reason though that they aren't the hardest Emmy, and you'll see why a bit later. Grape Juice has the most interesting Omega phase. You actually have to solve some interesting puzzles and have a limited amount of space to destroy its faceplate. I thought this one was really well designed, whereas the others are all kind of boring. You die a lot setting it up, but at least it's really satisfying to finally get the kill. The Robot Chozo Soldier is number 6, and that isn't very fun to say, so they've been dubbed the Robo Chozo. Rhyming. These fights were kind of hard to rank because they are kind of bullshit. They move real fast between platforms, much faster than Samus. You might find yourself clambering onto a platform and then suddenly this guy jumps in the blink of an eye right on top of you. Their blaster shots aren't horrible to dodge, but the hitbox and those damn red blade attacks are awful. And yeah, you can hop over it or flash shift away without too much trouble. The problem is you want that sweet, sweet counter. But the two blade attacks look so similar and happen so fast that you usually have to react before you can tell which it is or else you get hit. I got a lot of mid-air counters off it because I started to jump and was just able to edge back down close enough for my parry to register. I actually almost put this fight a bit higher on the list. The problem is Shine Spark. Oh, Shine Spark. The first encounter can be fully trivialized with it, and the second encounter gives you a healthy head start on damage, edging the Robo Chozo out of our top five. Number 5, King Crate Rule. On account of them both being crocodiles, and also their disgusting belly buttons. Seriously, y'all need a doctor. Fucking nasty. Kraid had a bad manicure and he's taking it out on you. Like most boss related fights in this game, this one involves the boss lobbing slow moving projectiles at you that mostly you can just shoot. Nails die to one missile, the regurgitated globules die to your arm cannon, but you can't hurt the fire so don't let it hit you. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I think most of these are pretty boring, which I know is a just a me thing. If you've seen the dislike ratio on my review for this game, then you know I have some sizzling hot takes, which people were not thrilled with. Link below. This fight at least has some good phase changes, and no hitting it wasn't too easy. I mean, it was fairly easy, but it took a few tries. I'm not sure if the vomit balls or the belly button balls are more disgusting. We do get a fun parry animation in this one, as long as he doesn't keep punching you. It took me a weirdly long time to get footage of the parry because King Cray just wanted to beat the shit out of me with them mitts. And here's a fun treat if you didn't know. If you pick the bomb up early, you can actually sequence break this boss by destroying this little thing at the bottom here in phase two, and then jettison yourself into that disgusting, festering abyss of a navel to kill Crate instantly. You take a little damage while doing this, so you can argue that this doesn't count as a no hit, but I wanted the footage, so suck it. I followed a tutorial from the seventh force to learn how to do this, and I'll link that down below. At number 4, we have the Icy Blue Emmy, or more accurately, Queen Elsa. That's right, I put the blue Emmy above the purple, and here's why. On hard mode, with only one energy tank, if Elsa sees you, you fucking die. It doesn't catch you, it doesn't just hurt, getting iced deals enough damage to end you right there and then. This means that you can't be detected by Elsa at all, and getting through all the sections like that is kind of a pain in the ass. On normal difficulty, or even with extra health maybe, Elsa would be below grape juice, but this is my list, bitch, and this is where I want to put them. Also, what happens to the ice vision once you destroy the central unit here? Is that the source of their power? The endings for all these Emmy are identical, and it's kind of too bad. I found the easiest place to remove the faceplate was near the top, and Elsa had to crawl across the wall like it's from the grudge. We're in the top five at this point, and I'm still not sure I would classify any of these as difficult per se. Death is just part of the game, baby! Number three is the robot Chozo Soldier, but this time there's two of them. Normally, I don't think adding a boss to an encounter makes them much harder, but in this case, it actually fucking sucks. Same thing as the single encounters, these guys move between platforms so quickly that by the time you move and get a missile or two out, you need to reposition again or else you are getting hit. And half the time there are beams headed your way, so you might just jump into an attack. Unfortunately, I think this is the case where the added difficulty isn't fun, it mostly feels like bullshit. I think in my normal playthrough I was able to tank my way through these fights fairly easily, but no hitting these fights was a real pain. I had to get Wave Beam in order to beat the second stronger pair, especially since you can't Shine Spark at all in that one as far as I can tell. It's a pretty small arena. This one is high on difficulty, but low on fun for me. Storm Missile is your friend here if you have the extra missiles to use it. Number 2, the Red Emmy. Oh shit, that was a big explosion. Fuck, I'm stunned. Here it comes. Maybe I can... 
Wait. I didn't do that parry. Is this just... This is a cinematic. The last semi is just a cinematic. Samus, you suck that robot dry. Right, like this guy stands a chance. I was kind of upset when this happened, but honestly, I think I'm glad because it would have just been more of the same with another Emmy. Also, did this guy look orange to you? Red Chozo, red Emmy? Maybe I need to calibrate my screen. This one's reassigned to the bottom of the list at number 19. Okay, number two for real this time is Experiment Z57, which is a bit of a mouthful. I've been referring to him as Flesh. He is a nasty boy, and the gross sinew he leaves everywhere reminds me a little bit of the Flood. There are a few reasons this guy made it to the second spot, and mostly it's because I was trying to do some fancy shit for this video, and it took a long goddamn time. Flesh is up there with Corpius as one of the most interesting fights. It really feels like a puzzle learning to avoid his different attacks, and near the end of the fight we actually do have to do a jumping puzzle. Basically everything on the list kills you in one hit on hard with only one energy tank, but in this fight especially you must be precise. Size. You gotta stand in the good holes and not get sliced and diced. I found out on my second playthrough he can climb down onto you? Never encountered that in my first run, so that was a surprise. The animated parry in this fight might be the coolest one in the game. Riding around on flesh while shooting him full of missiles was friggin' awesome. The real tough bit is the damn fan bullshit. On my first run it didn't do enough damage for me to care to learn, so I just tanked it all and finished flesh off. But goddamn, when that shit one hits you, it is the worst. The timing is surprisingly tight, and although it's the same pattern every time, I was also trying to do the fun Shine Spark ending to the fight, and trying to dodge the beams, activate Shine Spark, and get it off properly was extremely tough. But damn, it was worth it. Number one, Galactic Azir. Oh, no wait, wrong space bird. Ravenbeak. RP is the final boss in Metroid Dread, and also the hardest by a large margin. Most of the bosses at least have two phases with small differences, at least the decent ones, but Bird Boy has three, and they aren't fucking easy. So let's go by phase. In the first, RP has a lot of different moves. The big one here is his triple combo attack, which covers the whole goddamn floor. And his AI is actually smart enough that if you dodge it, he'll stop and move on to something else. He has a large black hole-like bomb that you need to either power bomb or use four ice missiles to destroy. And once there's some distance between you, he pulls out a laser sweep attack that covers the whole arena except for right beside him. Which he likes to follow up with that combo attack, which a single flash shift does not get you out of range for. And this is just the first part of the phase. After this huge red wave that covers most of the screen, you enter a parry sequence and he emerges out of it with a golden impervious energy shield. You have to basically wait out this phase until he does a bit of a come hither move and and gives you an opportunity to parry. This golden phase can actually be skipped if you deal damage to him just right. He transitions after a certain threshold, but if you deal enough damage during a parry, he will move straight into phase two. This is easiest to do by hitting him with nine missiles and then waiting for a parry. Shown here when his fist goes red and he lunges across the stage at you, then you need to spam the hell out of your arm cannon and hit him with another missile after coming out of the animation. This will trigger that red wave at the normal parry sequence. The combined damage from both parries will move him into the next phase. The important thing here is the parry damage. Getting two parries is almost essential. The nine missiles is just a consistent way to do it. Phase two though, it's just the worst. Phase one is actually fun, and to no hit him required mastering each phase one at a time. I had phase one down to a goddamn art form because phase two just takes forever. His new attack patterns aren't too bad. They all have solid tells and can be easily ducked under or flash shifted from. But this boy is a huge sponge. The whole fight takes about five or six minutes, and phase two must be at least four of those minutes. You're just bound to accidentally get hit by something over that much time, and it's extended based on how many times RB does the Gatling gun-like attack. You have to spend a lot of time jumping around him to dodge it. Also, you might be thinking, this stage is pretty big, you must have time for a nice shine spark. But um... That won't go over so well. When you slug your way through sponge phase, we have phase 3. A lot like phase 1, but with some fun, added moves that mix things up just enough to cause you to relearn the whole thing. The sun orb is fucked before you learn you can super bomb it, but even that causes quite the scene, which can make dodging his next move complicated. And his new shine spark attack comes out real fast. 
Your best hope is to get lucky with a few more counters before entering the final parry sequence. Now, truthfully, there is that fourth phase where you take out Ravenbeak X in the sick-looking Metroid outfit, but that's more like a low-key cinematic than a fight, so I wouldn't really count it. There's so much to cover with this guy, but Ravenbeak is a good fucking fight. Phase 2 is a little spongy, but overall the fight is challenging and feels great to overcome. None of the other bosses even come close to this one. I wish we had gotten more of this throughout the game. Well that's it, that's the list. Maybe you disagree with some of my spots, and I look forward to you letting me know in the comments. Who's your favorite? Which one is the most frustrating? Bosses are fun to discuss, so I'd love to see some of that down below. If you'd like to see the no-hit attempts, I've left a link in the description to that compilation. I think Dread could have used more interesting boss encounters. A few of them are pretty good, but others are really more like mini-bosses or slightly juiced up enemies. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more, and if you disliked it, make sure to hit that dislike button to help boost me in the algorithm. Until the next time, Bounty Hunters.